Here's Brody Brazil. So, I mean, this is definitely a subject and a topic I never thought I'd be making a video on. Who could have expected this, that Major League Baseball is about to announce they'll play a game next season at the Bristol Motor Speedway in Bristol, Tennessee. That's right, a regular season game at the same half-mile track where they run NASCAR races. Now they're about to run some big league fastballs at the Bristol Motor Speedway. I mean, I've got so many questions instantly here. Why? How? Where do you put the field? I mean, the logistics of this are pretty crazy. And I'm somebody who supports baseball branching out. I really do think they need to bring the game to more unique and specialty places every summer. It gets a bit monotonous. That many games across that many months. You need to spice it up once in a while. You need to give fans a taste of something different and a spectacle like this. But how exactly are they going to make this happen? First off, we should tell you this game is anticipated between the Reds and Braves. Yeah, next season, 2025. All of this was first reported by The Athletic. And if you're watching this on, what, Thursday, August 8th, it's expected to be officially announced tomorrow on Friday. Now, they're doing this game for mainly attendance reasons. It would surpass that 2008 game back at the L.A. Coliseum between the Red Sox and Dodgers. That one drew more than 115,000 fans. It seems like the whole purpose of this is to try and get several tens of thousands of fans, even more than that, to try and get up to like 140,000 fans or so attending a regular season Major League Baseball game between the Braves and Reds. And I'll get into some of the, ge the geography here and why they're doing this. Bristol, Tennessee, if you look at the map, and I don't know if everybody's familiar with this, but it's about a five-hour drive equal distance from Cincinnati and from Atlanta. So it's kind of like a straight line between those two cities. You go just a little bit east, and you're out there in Bristol, Tennessee. Now, the Motor Speedway there opened in 1961. It currently seats 146,000 fans. That number is from 2023. A handful of years before that, I think the total capacity was more like 160,000. And you know what? They could add some seats here, I suppose. We'll get into the layout, maybe a potential bleacher section in just a second. But I think they're trying to get close to 150,000 fans to watch a single Major League Baseball game and set this record. By the way, the track, which they do auto racing on, it's an oval track, 0.533 miles in distance, and it banks anywhere from 4 degrees on the straightaways to 28 degrees around the turns. And yeah, this venue has already hosted a college football game. We'll get into the Battle of Bristol in just a second. They actually tried to play an NFL exhibition game here, I think, uh, several years ago, maybe even several decades ago. Not very clear on all the details of that, but they have played a college football game here. That's a little bit different, though. Like the football field and the rectangle shape fits on the infield of this speedway. How are they going to get a baseball diamond inside that? I mean, that's what the football game looked like. That was in 2016, Virginia Tech against Tennessee. That looks pretty full. I didn't get the exact attendance there, but that kind of works for obvious reasons, right? The shape of the field, the length of the field, it fits. That just looks like a really big football stadium with a really big track running around it. In this case, not a running track like track and field, like an auto track that's going around it. But you got to think, like, how far away, hypothetically, how far away are you way up here for a, a touchdown in the end zone over there? I guess you're not much farther away than, you know, cars here running around the track, which it looks like, wait a second, are, do they, are those parked cars over there? Not exactly sure what's going on there, but they have done football here before, so it wouldn't be the first time it's something else than auto racing. Here are my takeaways, and in just a second, I want to make clear, I am going to draw out here potential field layouts and how they could pull this off and what the different alignments and layouts would look like, but let me first start with my takeaways here. I love these specialty games. As I mentioned, I think every summer, Major League Baseball game uh, games should be played at like the Field of Dreams site in Dyersville, Iowa, uh, in Cooperstown, potentially, for a Hall of Fame game at the Doubleday Stadium. I think Williamsport, Pennsylvania is a special place to play in tandem with the Little League World Series. I think what they did this past year in Birmingham, Alabama, 
in fact, this past year, just a couple months ago, to play at Rickwood Field. I think that should be an every season thing for Major League Baseball. But I didn't see this one coming. Like, there is no way anybody could have predicted the Bristol Motor Speedway would have been a candidate for playing a game like this. And again, I I think the main purpose and intent here is to just make it a spectacle, say that 150,000 people showed up and to try and break a new record. And that makes me think that they would do all this work just for one game. Because if you did it for two games or an entire series, yeah, I guess you're getting more out of the hard work that you did to set this up. But on the other side, you may not get that big one crowd of 150,000. If you pull it for one night and one night only... Yeah, you might break that modern attendance record. Not even modern, all-time attendance record. They say that that Dodger game in 2008 was the highest attended baseball game ever. But the question here is, will this will this really sell out? It's possible. I think it's likely. I don't know that it's guaranteed. Will they give away the remainder of the tickets just to make it full and make it feel like it's sold out? Yeah, they probably will. But I'll tell you this about the stadium, and the reason I say why wouldn't it be a sellout, I mean, there's going to be some really bad viewing angles here. I mean, I'll draw it out for you in a second. You think about being on some of the weird spots on on the far side of the stadium from where the field is actually going to be. I don't think they're going to put the diamond right in the middle of of the infield. They can't. You know why they can't? Because there's a giant hanging scoreboard there that they can't move. And if there's a pop-up, it's going to hit that. You, You can't play right in the middle. So you got to play on one of the ends, but what happens if your seat is on the far end? So yeah, there's going to be some really bad viewing angles. There's also definitely going to be some very unique field dimensions. I mean, this place is going to look like the polo grounds, which I'll show you, remind you about in just a second. And it's also interesting because they only do a couple NASCAR events here and a couple other things year round. Like they can make time in the schedule. This is not a heavily used, the Bristol Motor Speedway, not a heavily used sports venue, especially in the summertime, but I would still think it's going to take weeks, if not months, to put down layers of dirt and irrigation systems and then have the grass and the sod like set in and the dirt and have to, I mean, to make even a baseball field major league caliber just once for one game or even a batting practice day, the day before, whatever, to do all that work, it's going to take months to pull this off. They're literally going to put a baseball field over asphalt, concrete. I mean, it's possible and all this is doable, but wow, this is going to be a lot of work and effort to pull off. And it's going to take months of, of lead up just for that. Okay. So the polo grounds, and that's what this kind of reminds me of this entire situation here, just kind of like the, the whole oval shape. And I mean, look at the dimensions of the polo grounds here. Down the lines, it is very shallow. And then out here in center field, it's like, what, like 480 feet, something like that? That is a poke from home plate out there to center field, right? So, like, this is possible, and this is going to be unique, but even the polo grounds is honestly kind of like, or was, kind of tame compared to what they might do here at the Bristol Motor Speedway. So this is the aerial shot, right? And I guess there's a couple different ways to go about this. Number one, you could kind of put, you know, there's a foul line, there's a foul line. I'm trying to do a 90 degree thing here. And then I guess you could put a fence here, kind of like this. I mean, does that, does that kind of work? But then again, all right, let's say that, let's say those are your seats out there, or these are your seats out here, or these are your seats, or those are your seats. I mean, are they really going to fill all of this out here when the field is all the way over there? I'll take all that off. That's just, that's a lot. It's a lot to figure out there, right? So if the field really is over here where I've got it, I mean, clearly this whole section makes a lot of sense. Maybe they would put some more bleachers out here to kind of fill in that gap. And, and, and maybe they wouldn't expect to fill all those seats I'm sure they're going to try. I'm sure they want to get this to 150000 I guess there's another way they could do it. Uh, this would be really unique. Then you could do a, a typical right field distance, but man, it would have to get... Here, let me, let me do the fence in a different color. You would have to do like a really high green monster situation. 
like down here on the left field line, really high fence. Uh, maybe so high that people sitting right here couldn't see over the fence, right? Like right there. And still, it doesn't help me figure out what to do over here. Now, I'm drawing everything on this side of it because I just think this shape over here is better. I guess this is kind of the same shape. They could put the field on either side, but this is that hanging scoreboard I was talking about. This is obviously the top-down aerial view. It's got kind of like guy wires over here that they hang from, but right in the middle is that hanging scoreboard. So they can't really put the field anywhere in there because obviously a pop-up might hit that hanging scoreboard. You just can't do it. It's fine if the fence is, if it's beyond the fence and the fence is going to be here, something like that, or even if the fence was over here, that's fine, but you just can't, you know what I'm saying. You can't really deal with that scoreboard right in the middle. And the reason you're seeing two of them, there's, there's like the shadow of it, but there's the actual scoreboard. So, I mean, logistically, and I guess if you put the field on this side, it looks like there's this tunnel right here. You could build like clubhouses and stuff right outside, the temporary stuff you would need infrastructure-wise. But like this is crazy. The amount of work to make that oval shape and put a baseball field somewhere, somehow in there, this, this is insane. It really is, but I'll give them credit for having this idea, thinking about it, trying to pull it off, and I guess we'll know more details maybe on Friday. I would love to see the first renderings of this, how they plan to do it, you know, kind of give us what's the real reason. I think it's just to break that attendance record. And it's two interesting teams, right? The young up-and-coming Cincinnati Reds and the established Atlanta Braves, and it, it literally is a five-hour drive from both cities, so... Look, I do think it would be popular. I do think people would have their eyes on this. But again, it's just, it's one that for me kind of came out of nowhere. So I'm interested, I'm compelled, uh, but I, I kind of feel like I need some more details and visuals to actually get excited about it. Let me know what you think about this idea, good or bad or any different down below in the comment section. Also, while you're down there, Hit me with a thumbs up since you made it to the end of this video. That will greatly help me in this video and this channel. I would like that, but I would love it even more if you make sure you go down there right now, hit that subscribe button so I can definitely see you back here next time.